Okay, so I'm back. I'm going back to X. And now we was on the already six and seven. Now we were on Acts eight. And this is the persecution of the church. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles, apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hauling men and women, committing them to prison. Philip reaches, preaches in Samaria. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave he unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. <laughs> That's why we ain't got no people in the church. That we ain't performing no miracles. You busy preaching and preaching and preaching, and nobody ain't seeing nothing. People sick. You praying, 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 praying the prayer of faith. Ain't nobody healed yet. I guess that maybe that played the part in why Bishop Mingo's church was packed, because people experience healing from sickness with her. You see, that's why Bishop Anderson is still there. Because she prayed the prayer of faith and healed him. Pastor Glover probably still there. Because she prayed the prayer of faith and healed her through Christ, of course. But people praying and praying and praying, ain't nobody getting healed. Ain't nothing happening to nobody. All right, so let's go on. All right. Which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that was possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Simon's attempted purchase. Okay. Mm, what's that about? But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out giving out that himself was some great one. Okay, pretending. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Okay, so they was already underneath his spell. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, oh wow, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. So who is this? Philip, right? Philip is here, right? Okay. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so. All right. Then laid that they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So remember this is after the day of Pentecost when they when they was all filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Okay, so see, I want to speak on this for a little bit. See now they said that they going by that today. I've heard somebody said that. Now I'm seeing why they said that. I never read it. So now I'm reading it as for myself, how Peter, Peter, was it Peter? Yeah, how they, Peter, who was it, Peter and John? Yeah, how Peter and John and Philip lay hands on the people and the people received the Holy Ghost, okay? Because I heard people say to me that 
you don't have to do what you're doing in order to get the Holy Ghost, right? All you have to do is lay hands on the people and the people will receive the Holy Ghost. All of that you ain't got to do. It's in the word that, you know, I heard it. It was told to me now. Now? They right. It is in the word. Okay, so let's go on. For as yet he was falling upon... Wait, wait a minute. Okay. Saying, give me... No, no, no. Let me go on. I'm going ahead. Beholding the miracles and signs that were said. This is Acts 8, verse 15. Who, when they will come down, pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They then laid their, they their hands on them. And they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Mm. Saying, give me also this power, that on whosoever, whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Maybe that's why the laying of the hands. Wait. Maybe that's why the receiving of the laying on of, the receiving of the Holy Ghost through the laying on of hands was exempt. Maybe that's why God introduced the altar and Tarion so that he would have taken back that power. Because you see how Simon wanted to pay them so that he could have the power. Let's go on. Let's see what happened. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Okay, so it says, Simon himself believed, verse 13, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs. So, he was with Peter and them, following them. He believed, but he still did not believe. Okay, so let's go on. At thy heart, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gull of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Maybe that's the word I should say. I perceive. I perceive this. Right? Let's go on, verse 24 of Acts 8. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem, Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now, we're going into the Ethiopian Enoch baptism. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go to, towards the south, unto the way that, that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a Enoch, of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? See, people don't want to be that honest. They want to be like, read the word or understand the word. How you going to understand something that you ain't living or know nothing about? But let's go on. At least he was honest. He said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he should come and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. 
He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and that a lamb, and like a lamb dumb before his shudder, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the Enoch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the Enoch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's why people feel like they only got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And when they were come up out of this water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the Enoch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at, as Esther's, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesar. So what's the thing happened to Philip? Hmm. Okay, Saul's conversion. Oh my goodness. So this is, we're going to find out whether this is the same. Um, maybe it's not the same Saul that. Answer that because I'm just doing my study now and I'm just getting into Acts. So tell me if this soul that got converted, I'm presuming that this is on the road to Damascus. Tell me if this is the same soul that was king and that was running behind David to kill David and had turned, turned away and became a bad king. I'm just going to put it like that, you know. In, in in short term. Okay, so let's read on. Saul conversion. That's and this is Acts nine and one. And Saul yet breathing out threatening threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of the of this way whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, hey, Saul. <laughs> you know me, I got to exaggerate. Why persecuted thou me? Why are you killing me? Why persecute thou me? Let me read what the word said. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. <clears throat> And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. It didn't even tell us. The word don't tell us that he heard what the voice said. It just said that he heard the voice. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes was open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. I wouldn't eat and drink neither. I don't think I would have done it either. He fasted. I, I don't think Saul was, he was converted. I don't think he was saved or something like that. He was converted into the faith. That That's a good example of conversion, coming from one faith to another. Mm -hmm. But he did not get saved and receive the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't want to go ahead of myself. So now, what I was really getting at is that he was fasting because I don't think he knew anything about fasting prior to this moment. So where it says that he ate, let me see, where is that? Where is that? It's sign of um, him a light from heaven. He fell around so, so, okay. Right, mm-hmm. 
and he said and he was three days and he was three days without sight and neither did eat or drink so i'm thinking that because he couldn't he couldn't see nothing that's what caused him not to drink even though i heard people preached on this and they said that he fasted those three days well he had no other choice but to fast you have no other choice but to call it a fast because he couldn't see what he was eating you see what I'm saying? He probably was disturbed. He probably was scared. He probably was afraid because it does not say that the Lord told him to fast, right? He told him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So they went on, right? So now it doesn't tell us that he was told to fast. It just tells us here that he was three days without sight. And neither did he eat or drink. So it didn't say that he fast. It didn't say that God told him to fast. So I don't know where people getting this from. Maybe because they trying to relate him not eating and drinking to fasting. But let's go by what the word says. Let's go on. Let's see if he fast. I could be wrong. So this is Ananias and Saul. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named, Damascus named Ananias. And to him say the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, behold, I'm here, Lord. See, that's where I want to go. That's why I'm on this fast. That's why I'm going to 4 o'clock. You see what I'm saying? I usually go to 12. So I went from 12 last, well, I'm going to say from 1. I went from 1 o'clock last night to 4 o'clock. Because I am dead up serious for the Lord. I want to be able to have a conversation with the Lord like this. He talked to me and I talked to him. He tell I, he tell me he called me. Yes, Lord, what you want me to do? And he tell me what to do. Okay, let's go on. If it was done then, it can be due now. It can be done now. Okay, so let's go on. All right. He said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Taurus, for behold, he prayeth. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. So God done showed him. See, this is why I say when God tells you something, he going to go tell that leader. Right? So now he already showed Saul who was coming to him. See, this is why I don't have no shame in my game when God confirms something that I asked. And somebody get up in the church and preach it. Or somebody get up in the church and say it. That I ain't, I know I ain't talked to. When they say it, I say confirmation. Speak, Lord. So now he's telling Ananias already. That he already. Let's read that again. And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called straight. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Taurus. For behold, he prayeth. So that means that Saul was in there praying. Okay. So if you want to relate the three day, no sight, three day, no eating and drinking. If you want to put that can give, that verse gives understanding why the preachers of the day say that he was fasting. Because now you put and pray to it. So, okay, you want to say he fast? He fast, okay. All right, he prayed. This is what God was telling, telling Ananias. And upon he praying, and have seen in a vision, I showed him a vision. A man named Ananias, which is you, coming in, you're going to walk into his house, and you're going to put your, putting his hands on him that he may receive his sight. So God was already preparing Saul for his deliverance. You see what I'm saying? Just to say, before God deliver you, you may be going through this. You may be going through that. You're going to go through the situation. You're going to go through the fight. You're going to go through the flood and whatever, whatever. Right? But God is going to show someone your deliverance. Right? And he's going to show it to you as well. So, all right, here we go. Here we go. So, he already showed, he already showed Saul that Saul was going to receive his sight. Okay, here go Ananias. 
in the flesh. Okay. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints in Jerusalem. So that's normal for him to feel that way because he knows Saul be killing and persecuting the children of God. So he know he a, ch he a child of God. So he go up in Saul. Mm. He go up. Who house he said? And, no, not Ananias. Wait, 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 wait. I just have to say the Lord. See what he's going to say. Okay. He go up in Judah's house and confront Saul. And Saul get him killed. Okay. All right. So let's go on. Let's go on. So he was kind of leery. He was kind of nervous. You want to put the word scared? He was kind of scared. He was kind of doubting, you know? Okay. So let's go on. Uh, and okay, how much evil he had done to thy sense of Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that called on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Woo! Let me write this down. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't want to put, I want to put it where I can see it, where I can see it. Let me put, this is a message. Let me put message. Chosen by God. And we're going to use the scripture. Scripture. Acts 9 and where is it? Where is it? Put mine over there. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. 9 and 15. And put it together. Mm. Nine, 1. No, this is 831. 831. 20. 31. Add. Oh boy, let me hurry. I don't think I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish this one when I when I finish trade. I mean, let me see if I could just get the fundamentals out. Cause this is a pretty long scripture, so this is 43 verses. So we just gonna finish out soul in the masses. Okay. We're gonna finish out 29. Okay. Alright. Okay. Chosen vessel unto me to hear, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. See that? He was killing people. Saul was killing people. Now he got to turn around and he got to suffer for the same God of the people that he was killing. But it's going to all turn out. See, because God gets the glory out of all things. But so let's go on. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hand on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou cometh, hath sent me that thou mightest, mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Now Saul into Damascus. Saul in Damascus. This is still Acts 9 verse 19. And when he had received me, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. But all that heard him was amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews, the Jews which dwell at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. The disciples saved Saul from death. See, see, you don't want to hear nothing about no Christ. We're going to kill you. 
And the 23rd verse of Acts 9. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. Sound like the same thing happened with Jesus, right? Taking counsel. Meaning having a meeting with the council. The councilman. Let's go on. But their laying, but their laying await was known to Saul. And they waited the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. Okay, so let me say. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, this is Saul in Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. <laughs> they were like, wait a minute. They opened up the door. Hold up. They closed the door real quick. They say, yo, Saul at the door. <gasps> Everybody's scared now. Can't help that's the human side. Oh my God, he done found us. I thought we were supposed to be in hiding. He done found, mm, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Went back to the door. Barnabas went to the door. So but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out of at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord. You see what happens after you give your life to the Lord? Once the Holy Ghost comes in, you become bold. No, I better not say that. No, oh, that's going to hurt their feeling. Oh, my God. I hurt your feeling. I'm so sorry. Get some backbone. <laughs> Let me say, get some backbone. Let's go on. Let me hurry up. 3.33. Okay. Well, Barnabas took, okay, 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 okay. And he was with them, okay, going out of, and he spake boldly, uh-huh, uh-huh. Dispute, and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Gent the Grecians, the Grecians. But they went about to slay him, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Taurus, and sent him forth to Taurus. Then had the, Tarsus, Tarsus, Saul of Tar Tartus, Tartus, right? <laughs> then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Do you see that word comfort of the Holy Ghost? Okay, so I guess we could stop here. Because this is the end of soul. Now we're going to Peter. All right. So, Enina's healed by Peter. I'm going to try to read all of Acts through this week. Oh, let me tell her. All right, so let me see how many chapters. 10, 13. Wow, there's a lot of chapters in Acts. I'm, I probably won't be finished this. And can y'all see this? Chapters. And you know what? I didn't even read from one. I didn't even read. I started from five. Well, they got a prayer for boldness.
Check out this prayer. I don't think nobody even pray like this. I'm going I'm to go in the middle. No, no, we're going to go to the thing. And when they heard that thing, let me go to the top. This is Acts 4 and verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company. This is a prayer for boldness. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. And said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David had said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus I like that and when they were when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. People ain't praying like that no more. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God. I, I can't even do it like, like um, Steve Harvey did. And Lord, if you help us, Father God, we need your way, Father God. You know, it's all this Father Godness. Okay, so I'm going to go into prayer. And, um... And um, that will be the end of this this day of fasting. So let me just sing a song to end this out. And the song that's in my head, I'll sing it. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one everywhere. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Everywhere. Oh, one in Jesus' name. One in Jesus' name. One in Jesus' name. Everywhere. One in Jesus' name. One in Jesus' name. One in Jesus' name everywhere. Oh, one in the Holy Ghost. One in the Holy Ghost. One in the Holy Ghost everywhere. Oh, one in the Holy Ghost. One in the Holy Ghost. One in the Holy Ghost everywhere. One more time. Oh, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one everywhere. Oh, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one everywhere. Oh, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one everywhere. Oh, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one everywhere.